we are going to see how to hit endpoint central APIs using Postman for on-premises servers. Click on admin. Under integrations, click on API Explorer. The first step is to generate an authentication token. Click on authentication and then login. Under the choose authentication dropdown, select local authentication. Based on your organizational requirements, you can also choose AD authentication. After selecting local authentication, in the username and password section, enter your on-premises server login credentials, and then click execute. You'll receive a response on the right, scroll to the bottom of the response. Under auth data, the value for the auth token key is the authentication key. Copy and store this key. Or if you have enabled two-factor authentication, after selecting the mode of authentication and entering your login credentials, click on execute and wait for some time. The OTP will be sent to your email if you have opted for email as the mode of authentication or to the authenticator app if you have chosen authenticator app as the mode of authentication. Enter the OTP that you have received and then click on execute. The authentication key will be generated only after this two-factor authentication. It can be used to hit any API in the API Explorer page. Now, we'll use this key for authorization in Postman. The second step is to call the desired API. Now, let me go to the API that I want to call using the Postman. Let me go to Threat Details and select any of the one section say all applicable vulnerabilities. This API will retrieve a comprehensive list of all vulnerabilities. Here you can see the HTTP method is get. Now let us go to the postman and open a new request. In the postman, after selecting get as HTTP method, now we have to enter the URL. The URL that needs to be entered will be in this following format for all the APIs. The first half will be the URL of your endpoint central server, which in this case would be up till this. The rest of the URL would be the API URL mentioned in that API page. Copy and paste both in the postman. And then for authorization, go to headers. Under key, select authorization and under value, paste the authentication key that we have copied earlier and then click on send. In the response, now you can see the desired, which in our example would be a comprehensive list of all vulnerabilities. You can also filter the response generated according to some parameters. You can see the filter section in the API page for what parameters that could be filtered. In our scenario, let us take vulnerability ID. This vulnerability ID, which is in numerical form, is unique to a particular vulnerability. So using vulnerability ID, you can filter vulnerabilities based on what provided. To filter based on this, add question mark in the URL section, type vulnerability ID, and enter equal to and specify the desired vulnerability ID value. And then click on send again. Now you can see the filtered response as per your choice. Let us take another example for filtering the vulnerability based on patch availability. To add more criteria, you can enter and specify the next filter, which in our case would be patch availability. And like this, you can have the filtered response based on patch availability too. Filtering API requests helps in refining and narrowing down the data retrieved from a server. For paginating the response, use page limit to set the number of rows of data in JSON format per hit. For example, setting a page limit of five for total 10 rows of data will display the first five rows of data in the first hit. Use page in the second hit to specify the next set, such as entering two to view the remaining five rows of data. Using this URL and the previous URL, you can navigate through the data. 
Implementing pagination in your API request ensures that you can efficiently manage and navigate large volumes of data. Thanks for watching this video.